Ladies and gentlemen of the Varro Theatre, thank you so much for joining me today. As you know, unfortunately, we have lost yet another great musician. This time we have lost Melanie Safka. Many might not know Melanie, as her heyday was in the 70s and 80s, although she was always an excellent musician and songwriter. And so I wanted to introduce her to you and introduce her music. You see, Melanie first made a blip onto the collective awareness in the 60s. She was one of the three women to perform at the Woodstock Festival. She was helicoptered in, and uh, the way she remembers it, uh, she said, it was just me and my mother, um, born Melanie Safka Sherenki. Um, I didn't have a band, I didn't have a roadie, I didn't have a manager, I didn't have a producer. I was relatively unknown, especially in America. At that point, her song, Beautiful People, was generating some underground buzz at the time. She said, someone came up to me and said, Melanie, we've got to get up to the helicopter. And so my mother and me and my guitar, we just start running towards the helicopter. My guitar wasn't even in a case. It was hung over my back. We get to the helicopter door and the guy in charge says, Who's she? And I said, oh, that's my mother. He goes, no, mom. Sorry, mom. Bye, mom. And it was just me. And I got into the helicopter. And that day, she walked on the stage, an unknown person, and walked off a celebrity from the Summer of Love. Step inside the shoes I walk in Walk them down into a pasture Where the green may have been yellow But the music will remember In the summer of love In the summer of love In the summer of love Where we reached and reached for freedom where we kissed and loved a stranger And we asked our silly questions What if they held a war and nobody came? And would not settle for the reasons Did we rise up to the cause? Or did we cause the pain to happen? When humanity awakens Oh, but the music will remember In the summer of love In the summer of love In the summer of love There's a power on the hillside There was a magic in the moment It's a farmland that lies fallow But the dream goes on forever 
cynics laugh and make it less than Extraordinary wonder of the summer of love In the summer of love In the summer of love When we sang lay down, lay down Lay down, lay down Lay down, lay down In the summer of The summer of love. In the summer of love. When humanity awakens. Remember Melanie was born and raised in the Astoria neighborhood of Queens in New York City. Her father, Frederick Safka, was of Ukrainian ancestry, and her mother jazz singer Pauline Polly Altamer was of Italian heritage. She made her first public singing appearance, Melanie did, at the age of four on the radio show Live Like a Millionaire, performing the song Give Me a Little Kiss. She then moved with her family to Long Branch, New Jersey, and attended the Long Branch High School, where she was bothered by being pegged by her classmates as a beatnik. She ran away to California and after she came back to New Jersey, she transferred to Red Bank High School in Red Bank, New Jersey, where she graduated in 1966, though she was blocked from attending her commencement exercises because she had an overdue library book. But yeah, in 1996, she was inducted into the school's Hall of Fame. So just goes to show you. So. In the 60s, Melanie started performing at the Inkwell, a coffee house, the west end section of Long Branch. And after she graduated from high school, her parents insisted that she go to college. So she studied acting at, uh, at the, uh, studied, uh, studied acting at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York. Um, and that's when she started singing in the folk clubs in Greenwich Village, such as The Bitter End, which is still there to this day. And that's where she signed her first recording contract. And the first song that got buzz about her started is a song called Beautiful People. The inspiration for this song came to her during a New York City blackout that happened during her childhood. Um, she said, it was dark. There were old people in the building. Okay, maybe they were in their 40s, but to me they seemed old at the time. I feel so attacked. Melanie decided to hand, hand out candles during the emergency. She, and she said the evening was magical. It was anything but cold and uncaring, which was New York's reputation. And days after the blackout on the subway, I was thinking beautiful people caring from the heart. Melanie took that song about common folk to Woodstock after she was unexpectedly asked to play at the last minute. She was nowhere close to being a celebrity at the time. She was a complete unknown, so young that her mother actually drove her to the concert. She had never played for more than a hundred people before. And she said, I took that childhood experience with me upstate to Woodstock and what event and what an experience it was. The only time something like that of that magnitude ever happened to me, 
I was one girl playing three chords and a guitar and with attendees who came from some big rock performers. I thought they may stone me or throw tomatoes, but I resonated with 500,000 people instantaneously. Beautiful people, you live in the same world as I do. But somehow I never noticed you before today I'm ashamed to say Beautiful people We share the same back door And it isn't right We never met before But then we may never meet again If I weren't afraid you'd laugh at me I would run and take all your hands I'd gather everyone together for a day And when we'd gather I'll pass buttons out that say Beautiful people, then you'd never have to be alone Cause there'll always be someone with the same button on as you Include them in everything you do Beautiful people, you ride the same subway as I do every morning That's got to tell you something We've got so much in common I go the same direction That you do So if you'll take care of me Maybe I'll take care of you Beautiful people you look like friends of mine And it's about time That someone said it here and now I make a vow that sometime Somehow I'll have a meeting Invite everyone you know I'll pass out buttons to the to come to show Beautiful people you never have to be alone Cause there will always be someone With the same button on as you Include them in everything you do They may be sitting right next to you they may be beautiful people too And if you take care of them Maybe I'll take care of you Beautiful people So with her song and her guitar, Melanie changed many expectations. She began her career in New York in the coffee house circuits and with dreams of being an actress. She stumbled upon a record deal at the Brill Building on Broadway. Then when she responded to a casting call for a girl who played the guitar and sang, the doorman sent her to the wrong office, and so she appeared in the private offices of the American record producing team of Hugo and Luigi. Luigi introduced her to her future husband and manager, Peter Shekerick, and from this came her first recorded song, Beautiful People, which immediately became a turntable hit played by DJs, but not yet available in stores. Yes, what a coincidence. You think about it, if that mistake hadn't happened, Maybe we would have never had Melanie, the singer-songwriter. There was another song, though, that kind of defined Melanie's career for a while. 
And it is a song that is completely not representative of the music she often wrote. Um, Melanie was as a singer-songwriter. She, was, she wrote many introspective, many sweet songs. And she also had, um, she also had a wicked sense of humor. Um, Bobo's Party, for example, uh, and Animal Crackers were hit songs and they're kind of wacky. But she wrote a song that is one of her more, most popular ones, the brand new key. When it was released, this song was banned by some radios because, well, they inferred sexual innuendo in the lyrics. Um, and she, Melanie said that she could see how that song could be taken sexually, but the origin story of the song is as follows. Um, I was fasting with, 20, with, with a 27 day fast on water. I broke the fast and went back to my life living in New Jersey and we were going to a flea market. And on the way back, and I had just broken the fast from, you know, we passed a McDonald's and the aroma hit me. And I had been a vegetarian before the fast. So we pulled into the McDonald's and I got the whole works, the burger, the shake and the fries. Remember, this is, um, this is late 60s, early 70s McDonald's. So it was, the fries were still good. Uh, <laughs> And no sooner after I had finished that last bite of burger that the song was in my head, the aroma brought back memories of roller skating and learning to ride a bike and the vision of my parents holding the back fender of the tire and me saying, you're holding, you're holding, you're holding, right? Then I'd look back and they weren't holding it and I would fall down. Um, so that whole thing came back to me and out came out this song. It was not a deliberate or intentional sexual innuendo. Um, and, oh yeah, I remember when McDonald's served real food. Um, does that make me old? Oh God. In any case, um, this is brand new key. I rode my bicycle past your window last night. I roller skated to your door at daylight It almost seems like you're avoiding me I'm okay alone, but you got something I need Well, I got a brand new pair of roller skates You've got a brand new key I think that we should get together and try them on to see I've been looking around a while, you got something for me. Oh, I got a brand new pair of roller skates, you got a brand new key. I ride my bike, I roller skate, don't drive no car. Don't go too fast, but I go pretty far. For somebody who don't drive, I've been all around the world. Some people say I've done all right for a girl, oh yeah. I asked your mother if you were at home. She said yes, but you weren't alone. Oh, sometimes I think that you're avoiding me I'm okay alone, but you got something I need Well, I got a brand new pair of roller skates You've got a brand new key I think that we should get together and try them on to see La 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 got a brand new pair of roller skates you've got a brand new key so she was only one of three solo women who performed at the Woodstock Festival in 1969 and the inspiration for her first hit song, Candles in the Rain, came from that experience. 
As her music grew and as experiences mounted up, her audiences grew as well. And speaking of growing audiences, if you will notice, right below me on the stage, there is a button that says Theatre Donations. Please do consider giving generously to the Varro Theatre to help continue this series of concerts. Now, if you look to the right of that, you will see my tip jar, which has a very important thing. It has my group inviters. You can go ahead and click subscribe on the little yellow, um, whatever you call it, um, dialogue bubble. Yes, that's what it is, a dialogue bubble. Um, you can click on that if your groups are maxed out or you are saving that extra group for that very, very important group that you've always been wanted, you've always wanted to be invited to. Well, you don't have to waste your group spaces on mine. You can go ahead and click on the subscribe dialog button and it'll subscribe you to my notifier. However, if you do have groups to spare, you can join the group right there. Or if you are with it, you can join my Discord chat, which is active and we constantly post not only just my events, but some other uh, similar events, such as my friend Mel Cheeky's engagements uh, and the UFW um, shows. So, but w without um, talking about growing audiences, Melanie brought something that most audiences have not experienced before. Bruno Cucatri um, scheduled her for 40 consecutive days of performances in Paris's Olympia Theater, which was you know, the Olympia in, uh, in Paris is the theater where the greats usually perform for long extended periods. You would have Edith Piaf there, you would have Michel Sardou, you would have Barbara. So being asked for a 40 day, 40 consecutive day residentship at l'Olympia was a big deal. From there, she traveled to the United Kingdoms for more shows. She returned briefly to the United States and took the stage as the final performer on the first day of the legendary Woodstock Music Festival. And then her, you know, her songs captivated hundreds of thousands of people that night. The rain fell and the audience raised candles in response to her. The following year, Melanie made the journey to the United Kingdom again to perform at the legendary Isle of Wight and Glastonbury festivals. Interest was building up. The popularity of Brand New Key made a lot of people think that Melanie was in many cases a novelty act, a cute novelty act, but the truth couldn't be further from that. Underneath the young, very young looking girl and the childlike, unique, raspy voice was someone who was in many ways mature for her years as a songwriter. Um, in many ways, she reminds me of Kate Bush, insofar as, because you, you know that Kate Bush wrote The Man with the Child in His Eyes when she was 13. But, um, and so I have an example here, one of my favorite songs by her, uh, that she wrote when she was 23, if I recall correctly. Um, but it is an unusually mature take on, you could say, post-emotional trauma relationships. Uh, it is a song called Together Alone. Take care of each other, I'll be your sister Your mother, your lover, we'll be friends During changes of weather, let's be together On our own Let's be together alone We're believers, we've been hurt by believing 
needing people we know looking's not seeing i see needs that might be answered by forever together on our own let's be together alone We'll learn living like the words of a good song. We'll learn timing, balance and rhythm. We'll make it music. I don't want to sing it on my own. Let's be together. Let's be together alone. Oh, let's be together. Let's be together. The interest in Melanie's performances and songwriting grew. She performed at Carnegie Hall in New York, as well as the brand new Lincoln Center Metropolitan Opera House, the largest repertory opera house in the world, now affectionately known as the Met. She was invited to be the first solo pop rock artist to perform at the Sydney Opera House. And not only that, in the 70s, Melanie also became the first American woman to open her own record label. John Rockwell of the New York Times wrote, Melanie's cult has long been famous, but it's a cult that's responding to something genuine and powerful, which is maybe another way of saying that this writer counts himself as part of the cult too. Jazz piano virtuoso Roger Calloway said, Melanie is extraordinary to the point that she could be sitting in front of us in this room and sing something like, Mama, Mama, write to us, and it would just go right through your entire being. One of those songs comes from 
an album that Melanie launched in the 90s, which I think is one of the finest torch songs. Kind, and I can know what a torch song is. Don't give me that look. Um, one of the finest torch songs ever written, and it is incredibly poetic, so much so that I just had to sing it, even though it is part of her later repertoire. The song is called Be the Sky. Yes, totally called out. <laughs> Be the sky I long to fly through I'm a song for your breeze to sing I'm in this play without a part And I stand silent with my racing heart Beauty cries out to everyone so if you ever hear her sing, we live to play our souls out loud. Yet we stand silent with our racing hearts. It has its own life, it has its own sun, it has its own God, it has its own gun. It knocks at heaven's door and opens it as well. It seeks its own truth, finds its own hell. And condemned to wander worlds apart, I stand silent with my broken heart. Condemned to wander worlds apart, I stand silent. With my racing heart These places of my longing Beyond isolation's door In realms of dream I light the spark My soul shall burn beside my racing heart There is no vindication For the ones who truly love There is no peace of mind No answer clear enough no one to ever tell why we choose life to live, or if there is a plan. And so, briefly, I was introduced to the music of Melanie 
bizarrely enough, not from my childhood, which is usually the case in these things, um, which is why an opera singer would dare to try to sing. Um, and I have to tell you, when it comes to this concert, my voice is pretty much inadequate. Um, you really need to listen to Melanie singing because her voice was very much one of a kind. It was this a raspy, in many ways almost childlike voice, but the extreme and unique quality of it, above everything else, in everything she sang, and in many ways, the very way she spoke, there was an absolute and complete vulnerability that just shot through you. Yes, a very, very powerful, very emotional voice. Um, a quality that I don't really, I've never heard in anyone else since. Um, you're welcome, Cypress. In fact, um, everything, yes, Gypsy told me, um, thank you for coming. Some of you might want to listen to um, Ruby Tuesday, the original version by the Rolling Stones, if you don't know the song. Um, then go ahead and listen to Melanie's version of Ruby Tuesday. And I guarantee you, you will never want to listen to the Stones again. Um, the way she brings out what was already in the song, but the Stones couldn't actually portray it. Melanie just paints beautifully um, with the arrangement and with her singing. I want to sing to you now one of my favorite songs um, from her, uh, Stone Ground Words, which is an album, is, a, is the name of the album. Uh, it was released in 1972, but it contains the song um, uh, stone ground words. Um, and it was her conscious effort to move away from the pop novelty act um, aura that brand new key had sort of foisted on her. And she was bringing out her more introspective material. Um, and she wanted to remind people that brand new key was a complete one-off for her. Uh, Melanie oversaw the release of a deluxe edition of the album to restore it to its original double album configuration. Um, and the reviews of the album uh, in Billboard, for example, there were raving reviews. Um, Billboard said it was one of the finest packages of her career thus far, uh, with incredible sensitivity and moving lyrics. Re Records World said that it was a charmingly packaged set, perhaps the best of Melanie's album yet and together alone which i sang earlier starts things off beautifully and the rest is consistently fine so you can remember together alone which i just sang set the tone for the entire album and stone ground words is a very interesting song um, about relationships and and emotional needs and in many ways, the lack of emotional fulfillment. Um, I will let the song speak for itself. Send me down to the nerve made to live stone ground words imagine that you did all of that and I come back for more imagine that I lived on the Dan 
sing and look for my partner. I thought the path could be a double road. You played my heart like a drum beating warning. Oh, I guess I'm gonna dance this one alone. I'll go to the garden that follows the seasons, live in the fields where the healing grass grows, go to the mountain where it's clear for breathing, clear is just another way to see I feel to know Lens in the ocean bathe in the power live with the sea I'll be the ocean's bride And they send me down To the nerve Make me live on stone ground Imagine that you did all that, and I come back for more. Imagine that I lived on that, and I. Sadly, despite having created many iconic, beautiful songs, Melanie did not get to benefit from the royalties that a singer and songwriter of her stature deserved. Melanie said that she didn't receive royalties from any song she wrote before 2004 because her husband, producer and business manager, Peter, sold her publishing and performance rights without telling her. She discovered the truth only when her husband of 40 years died in 2010. When I heard those news and I found out about that last year, um, when I decided to look up recent news about Melanie, I found that and one particular song that she wrote immediately jumped to mind. And it's one of the songs that, like her or not, um, Miley Cyrus decided to cover with Melanie, which in many ways did bring Melanie to a new generation of fans. Um, so 
Thank you to Miley Cyrus for that. Not a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> but you'll see what I mean when I sing this song. Um, it's called um, What, well, Look What They've Done to My Song. Look what they've done to my song Look what they've done to my song It was the only thing that I could do half right And it's turning out all wrong Look what they've done to my song Look what they've done to my brain Look what they've done to my brain Well, they picked it like a chicken bone And I think I'm half insane, ma Look what they've done to my song Wish I could find the good book to live in Wish I could find a good book to live in Well, if I could find a real good book I'd never have to come out and look at What have they done to my song? La da 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 La da 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 La da 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 Look what they've done to my song Ils ont changé ma chanson Ils ont changé ma chanson C'est la seule chose que je peux faire Et ce n'est pas bon ma Ils ont changé ma chanson Look what they've done to my song ma Back, turn it upside down and ma. Look what they've done to my song. Ils ont changé ma chanson, ma. Ils ont changé ma chanson. C'est la seule chose que je peux faire et ce n'est pas bon. Ma, ils ont changé ma chanson. Look what they've done to my song. Ma, ma look what they've done to my song. It's the only thing I could do have right, and they turn it upside down. Ma, look what they've done. My song la, da, 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 da. Of course, as I told you, we lost Melanie last week and she was working um, recording of a new album of covers called Secondhand Smoke, which included things such as Nine Inch Nails, 
hurt. Um, and other selections that when I read it makes me hope that the album will be released posthumously. I hope. Um, so Melanie, in her youth, spent a Halloween trick-or-treating for UNICEF. And as an adult, she became UNICEF's spokesperson and toured the world in support of protection of children everywhere. Um, in more recent times, the South Korea government invited her to perform um, her song, The Saddest Thing in the Demil Demilitarized Zone between um, North Korea. This song is known as a heartache anthem for the split between the two countries. Um, in the 90s, she wrote, um, well, I already, I already sang um, Be the Sky, but there's another song from her 90s output that I think is very, very interesting. Um, it is a metaphor for life from the perspective of a driver. Um, and about the hazards of the road and about all the difficult um, obstacles and hardships that she encounters. But above everything, she is very certain that she will make it over to her final destination, a mountain where she will be able to breathe in the fresh air of the sky. There's a rock in the road and a ditch on the side and a steep hill that must be climbed It's a big heavy load And it measures too wide And a destination that's hard to find But uh, I will get over I'll make it there There's just no getting round in this trouble I bear There's a stop sign ahead, and it's slippery when wet, and a detour of every turn. There's a narrowing bridge, and a long threatening ridge, and a big old slam slide that bars return, but a... There's a wreck on the right, and it's getting on night, and the headlights, they won't turn on. All my brakes have been worn, bumpers been torn, and my pride and patience, they're all but gone, but I
And as our evening draws closer to its end, there is one final song that I must sing. And it is a song that I can't leave unsung. And every Melanie fan knows which song that is. So allow me to give you the story. And I will ask this of you. The candle that just appeared in the center of the room, go ahead and click on it, and you will receive a candle. I ask of you that you wear this candle and that you stand up. When Melanie arrived at Woodstock, the festival was drenched in rain, mud, food shortages, unsanitary conditions. When she took the stage at the age of 19, she had never performed for more than a hundred or so people. When she looked out at the tens of thousands in front of the stage in that August 15th night, she had a case of nerves, to say the least, but she gathered her courage, walked onto the stage, and sat on a metal folding chair. She played without backing players, the only woman and only one of three performers at the fest to do so. It was just her and her guitar. Although she was a complete unknown at the time, the audience was enchanted and began to light candles, matches and lighters which they held aloft as she performed. Stories regarding the lights are conflicting, but legend says that members of the Hog Farm commune happened to have handed out the candles throughout the Woodstock audience just before Melanie's set. And the shimmering lights deeply impacted Melanie. When she returned home, she wrote about the sight and her feelings of camaraderie and joy when she was in the festival. And she wrote a song called Lay Down Candles in the Rain. And it would become one of the defining anthems of the Woodstock generation. When discussing the creation of Candles in the Rain, Melanie recalls how the song began forming in her mind even during the festival. The lyrics reflect the Even during the festival, the lyrics reflect the overwhelming sense of community she felt that night because it was secular, but they agreed after Melanie explained the meaning behind it. The song, did we lose audio? Okay, no. Uh, the song, give me one second, let me make sure that my recording is still going on because I'm recording. The, yeah, it is still on. Um, I don't know what happened, but the, um, I will read a little bit of what was there. Melanie recalls how the song began forming in her mind, even during the festival. Um, the lyrics, yeah, I can see here that my counter has gone back to 40 seconds, so I think the stream got interrupted and, I, and it got, uh, wow. You're going to have to share that experience after the concert, Cyprus. Um, the lyrics reflect the overwhelming sense of community that she felt that night, witnessing that hill light up uh, akin to seeing countless fireflies. Melanie recorded candles with the Edwin Hawkins singers who had previously popularized Oh Happy Day. Now, they were initially hesitant to record the song because it was secular, but they agreed after Melanie explained the meaning behind the song. The song, which blends folk and gospel, also became an anthem for the anti-Vietnam war protesters. And when, um, when Melanie passed away, her family requested that on that Wednesday, um, her fans and friends would light candles uh, and hold them aloft in celebration of her life and music. And so we will do the same as I perform the last song of the night, candles in the rain.
As soon as I rest the set, I forgot the set. There we go. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you, Cypress. Um, tell, do feel free to tell me what they think. Um, and I want you to do me a favor tonight. I want you to go and buy yourself a Melanie Sotka album. There's a ton of them. They're all currently on sale in um, the I on iTunes and on Amazon Music um, and Cyprus here um, if I recall correctly help produce her greatest hits album which is how I was introduced to the music of Melanie Safka and so for that I am incredibly 
grateful. And so now, uh, as some, as you know, as is my, as is custom, I have to go and feed myself because I never perform before a performance. Uh, sorry, I never see. I'm I'm half star. 